I was once told by someone that the sound of my voice makes them wish for total nuclear holocaust. Uh, that was probably the harshest thing that has been said to me, uh, at least on this channel. Uh, for so long I've avoided opening up or talking explicitly about myself. I didn't think there was much interest in that uh, for you, the viewers, uh, or myself really. But a few of you have approached me now about doing a Q&A or ask questions, uh, so I figured why not. Uh, we're going to be going long tonight, so have a seat by the fire. Um, one sec, I'll put a little bit of uh, music on, and uh, let's do this. Uh, now these questions were sourced from comments, uh, emails, and DMs, and rather than go question by question, uh, this is going to be more freeform. I'm going to try to keep them organized by topic. Uh, I'll post timestamps as well uh, if you want to just hear about Sleep Core, The Simpsons. Um, but yeah, if uh, you're new here, this should be a good introduction as to what the hell all this is and why it is. Uh, and if you're not new, hopefully you will learn something, or this will shed some light uh, further on our little operation here. Uh, bringing us in was the most backlash I've ever received. Uh, I take a lot of flack for my voice, I get it. I record under less than ideal circumstances. Uh, I live in a very noisy basement where it is near impossible to speak for longer than 30 seconds without some kind of disruption. Uh, so yeah, I have to use the best takes I have, which uh, can sometimes be pretty shitty. Um, there's also the happy medium of sounding natural and scripted. Uh, it's no secret I work off of a script. Uh, again, it's what works best given the recording cir uh, circumstances. Um, but I speak fast. I always have. I can't slow down without sounding condescending or tripping over my words. Um, but yeah, overall the feedback I do get is very positive, or at least well-intentioned. Um, in terms of other backlash, uh, someone early on told me to speak sentences, not sing them. Uh, all I could think is, man, this sounds great. You know, I want to sing. Let me sing for you. Um, I've also gotten a lot of anti-Semitism, especially on the Bartmania video, uh, which I don't get. Uh, some homophobia, but again, the reaction is mainly positive. Um, voice aside, in terms of content, I received a little bit of pushback. Uh, I sometimes feel like I have two or three different audiences uh, between Sleepcore, uh, Animation, and other, I guess. Um, I am niche. Uh, I am not for everybody, nor should I be. Uh, I think there's an insidious myth that the goal of this platform, or really any social media platform, is more than more is best. Um, you know, you want everyone to watch you, and I don't. Honestly, I want to challenge myself uh, to try something new. Uh, and if you're doing that right, you will alienate people. Uh, you will lose subscribers, and that number will go down. Um, but that's integrity. I'm, I'm not saying I'm intentionally making stuff so people leave. I try my best for crossover appeal. Um, you know, if I'm talking about media, I'll include clips of The Simpsons, <laughs> or spin it in a way uh, that even if you don't like it, or you think you don't like it, uh, you'll find something interesting uh, about what I'm doing. Um, I obviously want people to like what I put out, um, but I have never explicitly said, what do you want to see? You know, because I feel that my role as a creator and a, a curator is to deliver content and hopefully expose you to things that you will like, uh, that maybe you didn't know about. It's obviously very discouraging when you put weeks into something and no one watches. Uh, for so long I was creating and posting content for literally 10 views. Uh, there have been so many sleep course streams broadcast to no one. Um, but yeah, I don't create for attention. Uh, I mean, it's great, but I was making stuff long before anyone was watching, uh, simply for the joy of creating. I am used to rejection. Uh, before this channel, I wrote fiction, so many rejection letters there. Uh, I've always been creative. Um, I was lucky enough to attend a high school that at the time had a Mac Lab and Final Cut Pro, and was given the keys and encouraged to learn and make whatever I wanted to. I've always enjoyed video editing. Um, I find it relaxing, and I made this channel as a way of promoting books that I was publishing. Um, I began self-publishing in 2012. Uh, I wrote a novel that I finished and published in 2014. Um, I was very listless after that. Uh, I started publishing other people first online, and then I released a physical collection, uh, which patrons get, uh, hoping to mail out a couple once this crisis dies down a little bit. Before I got into making content, I became interested in creative nonfiction. I started working on a book about Mount Pleasant Cemetery, a graveyard here in Toronto filled with uh, famous people, uh, or notable people, that's where they're buried. Um, it was going to be a series of mini biographies mixed or juxtaposed against navigating the world of online dating. I got about 30,000 words into it uh, before I grew out of it. Um, but yeah, started making book trailers and then wanted to expand the content I was putting out. So I started a series with my friend at the time called Literature Unkempt. Uh, I used to be a voracious reader, but ever since I started making content regularly, I've fallen out of reading for pleasure. Uh, so much time is dedicated to researching and reading about a topic uh, that if I am to consume something, it's more likely to be a movie or a video game. Uh, I'll talk more uh, about my taste in literature in a bit, um, but I do not come from academia. Uh, I am working class, and I have always had a chip on my shoulder when it comes to academia. I want to discuss literature from the perspective of an outsider, uh, for those that may feel the same way. 
Uh, I knew my resources were limited, and with very little experience uh, producing a show, you know, I treated mistakes like focus issues or audio hiccups as part of the show's philosophy and aesthetic. Uh, that was a big thing for, with me for a while, uh, alienation. Uh, my novel is pretty impenetrable, and I wonder uh, why no one read or published it. Still, series highlights for me included drunkenly ranting about sex work and Chester Brown and profiling one of my favorite local stores, The Monkey's Paw. Uh, through giving these mini bios on authors, I learned I really enjoyed making that kind of content uh, versus straight criticism. I've since taken that series down. Um, it was awkward and a shitty period of my life, uh, but who knows? Someday maybe I'll revive it. Uh, when I broke away from literature, I began focusing more on comics and obscure media. Uh, the standout of those early videos is definitely Let's Go to the 1951X. Uh, I have always loved carnivals and my obsession with the World's Fair is well documented uh, here on this channel. Um, this video was inspired by something I found at the Monkey's Paw. It was a program for the 1951 Canadian National Exhibition, uh, or CE. Uh, I wanted to capture that event. You know, I still love this video. My voice leaves a lot to be desired, but the production and the way it goes between information and musical interludes uh, was a great exercise in editing. It's great, check it out if you haven't. I became interested in animation through indie comics and zines. It's TCAP season, and I'm absolutely heartbroken this year. It was cancelled. Uh, I get why and I support it, but it's still very sad. Uh, for years I've treated TCAF as my unofficial kickoff to summer, along with Anime North, and I will definitely miss both of them. But it seemed like it was easier to make videos on animation than comics, uh, but every year I have stuck with TCAF, showcasing the books and artists I uh, and Josephine Norman discover. Uh, it's always very inspiring to see independent artists doing it, uh, selling their stuff. Uh, this new normal will probably affect these sorts of events going uh, forward. Um, but I would love to cover and, uh, you know, travel around and make videos on comic or film festivals. Uh, that's definitely a goal. Uh, in terms of what I'm most proud of, uh, or what my greatest achievement is with this channel, I would say animation propaganda in terms of scripted or research videos. Uh, this was a huge undertaking. I would not recommend anybody attempt to put together and produce a series on information control in six months. Uh, seemingly while the world's on fire, you are going to have a bad time. Um, but I'm fascinated with the idea of manufactured realities, uh, not any sort of tinfoil hat way. There is no one reality, and no one is immune to propaganda. Um, tying that in with animation, the idea that both are manufactured and distorted realities, and exploring how the medium is used to promote narratives uh, and information I found interesting, uh, but very depressing, drawing parallels to the world we live in. Uh, however, my greatest achievement, uh, this channel, or possibly ever, is the first Sleepcore anniversary stream, Dreams, Media, and Memories. Uh, we'll get into Sleepcore in a little bit, um, a little more in-depth, I mean, in a little bit. Um, but I put this up with my novel as the best things I've created. Uh, this is my contribution to the human experience, as, as silly as that sounds. Um, I love how it drifts in and out of coherence, and how it simulates a restless night in front of the television. Uh, it ran from midnight to 6am, with media fading to dreams and memories. Uh, and narratives emerging, uh, trauma, murder, ending with a network sign-in, uh, begging the question, what was real, what was on television, and what was just in our heads. I spent a month crafting it. Uh, this is peak sleep core, uh, the realization of everything I ever wanted it to be. Uh, things I'm not so proud of, uh, there are videos I rushed out, uh, content for the sake of content. Uh, there have also been some cases where I attempted to appeal to a mass audience, or what I believe a mass audience wants, you know, and, and got facts wrong or misunderstood, uh, which is very embarrassing. At best, I create edutainment, I love researching, I find it therapeutic. Uh, most of the videos I make come from an interest in something I want to learn more about. I, I make them to remember, um, but as I am learning, uh, as I'm making it, I am bound to get a few things wrong. Again, I don't consider myself an intellectual, I try my best to be as factual as possible, and I think it's great that people can learn and find educational value in these videos, um, but my for, uh, first goal is to entertain. Uh, above all else, I am a glorified carny. Uh, that's how I see myself. Uh, another huge letdown was the Screamathon last year, last Halloween. I hyped this up so much, and people were so into it, and my power cut out three quarters of the way through. Uh, gutted me. I feel like I let the viewers down. You know, I'm sorry if I did. It's uh, it's all on Patreon in full now for free, uh, if anyone's interested. But yeah, that uh, that really sucked. I treat this channel like a TV channel that presents different kinds of programming, uh, which I think can also put people off. Again, multiple audiences, but also multiple voices. Uh, I've talked in the past how I eventually want to include other creators uh, when I can pay them. But until then, I want to create videos in different formats. Uh, with different formulas, uh, not any kind of alter way or by different personas, but I want animation propaganda to feel different, uh, obviously, than Sleepcore or this wonderful world. Uh, I want each series to have its own identity 
and make creative choices on how the information is conveyed around that. Um, I am not a critic, though I love critiquing media I consume. Uh, I do provide criticism in my videos, uh, but I have little to no interest in purely critiquing something because if I'm going to put energy into making it, you know, a video, I don't want to harp on its negatives, something's negatives. Um, and it's certainly not important that I'm right and that my opinion is heard. Uh, I'd rather be felt and craft a narrative, um, you know, around the media, if that makes any sense. I am not going to tell you things you didn't know. Um, you know, I'm not going to tell you the untold story of something. Uh, I'm not dunking on that content. It just really doesn't interest me. Um, I enjoy learning about and presenting things uh, that are also a little more obscure. Uh, if I was to compile a list of my favorite or must watch videos that I've made, um, I would include the Dreams, Me the Dreams Media Memory Stream uh, in the CNE one I just mentioned, uh, but also Media Last Six. Um, I get a little soapboxy in it, uh, heads up. Uh, and also our holiday special from last year. I love the concept of everything the channel is known for uh, coming together for the holidays. Rounding out the top five, a, uh, a brief history of home video rental, just because that was uh, such a great world to live in for a time. Uh, I love YouTube. I love uh, watching YouTube, but I don't really watch content similar to my own. Uh, bigger YouTubers that I watch or have watched. Uh, I'm a huge Mark uh, or wrestling fan, so I've watched a lot of stuff uh, in that fandom. Uh, like OSW, Old School Wrestling Review. Uh, these guys basically review wrestling storylines or arcs over several videos. Uh, I've taken a lot of inspiration from them, especially when I branched out into series. Um, I love how niche user-generated content can be. Uh, the fact that I can consume highly produced media that caters to so many of my interests at once, uh, like OSW with wrestling, video games, uh, and of course The Simpsons. Uh, they're huge fans of the show. I used to watch Dan Bell, but he kind of seems like a dick, so I stopped. Uh, I also use YouTube to be a fly on the wall. I love vlogs. I love making them. Uh, there's some over on Patreon. I, I would never put them up on here. Um, but uh, the ones that I like are very raw and not very overproduced. Uh, I love seeing how regular people live and how they present themselves, especially when they think no one else is watching. Uh, many people I follow are under a thousand subs, um, some under a hundred. Uh, I'm not going to out them for their privacy, um, but I love the honest portrayals you get when people think they're throwing themselves into the void. Uh, I find that relatable. A couple years ago I was lamenting how small my channel was, um, and you know, I am still relatively small and unknown, um, but I had this terrible thought that people did know me. Uh, and, and that I had a reputation and that people were laughing at me, um, you know, but I'm, I'm much healthier now. <laughs> um, I don't do this for money. I don't run ads. I don't believe in it. Uh, I would love to make a living on this. I've gotten a little taste of it during this quarantine uh, of what life could be like, um, and it's great. Uh, thank you to every patron who has ever supported us, past and present. Uh, you're making it happen, uh, but I do have a day job. Uh, IRL, I am a wage laborer. I live paycheck to paycheck and in constant fear of housing instability. Uh, I know I'm not alone in this. I've never settled on a career um, because I've been focusing on creating, be it literature or these videos, um, and hopefully making it go at that uh, with some success. Um, but I do uh, create for the joy of creating and would encourage anybody who wants to write a book or make a movie or start a YouTube channel to do the same. Uh, you're only competing against yourself, so put those blinders on. Uh, moving away from YouTube, uh, to my influences, uh, they are varied and depend on what I'm making. Uh, for videos, Adam Curtis is huge. His use of media to craft narratives is fucking masterful. Um, my favorite film of his is A Felt Like a Kiss, which looks at America's influence during the later half of the 20th century. Um, I'm also someone who believes you shouldn't turn on an influence just because you've outgrown them. Uh, both Bob Dylan and Kevin Smith have had a massive impact on me at different times. Uh, my novel was written in a bunch of different styles and from perspe uh, different perspectives. Um, I was really into Italo Covino at the time. Uh, I was watching a lot of Robert Altman and Rainier Werner Fassbender movies. Uh, I always wanted to make movies uh, or films, but have never had the budget to do so. Uh, I studied film, journalism, and publishing, and I think this channel reflects that, uh, or this whole enterprise reflects that. Um, I have not read fiction in many years, uh, but I love creative nonfiction. Um, I'm not super into his fiction, uh, if you can call it that at this point, uh, but I love George Orwell's nonfiction. Uh, it informed a lot of my political beliefs. Uh, make of that what you will. Uh, in terms of Canadian authors, uh, Charlotte Gray, The Massey Murder, was excellent. Uh, and Douglas Copeland, who wrote an awesome biography on Marshall McLuhan. Uh, I sometimes fancy myself a poor man's McLuhan in terms of media theory. Um, one of my favorite things ever is his book, The Medium is the Massage, where he illustrates his theory that the medium is the message uh, through collages and juxtaposition. It's absolutely fascinating. Uh, you can pick it up and look at it for five minutes uh, or an hour. Um, yeah, I'd love to do a video on him in the future. I probably will. 
Um, I'm also super into indie comics. I don't read a lot of mainstream or superhero comics, but some artists that I love are Chris Ware. His Rusty Brown series is incredible, even though I couldn't get into the set that came out last year. Um, Sarah Farrick, I discovered her at TCAF years ago. I love the way she uses spaces uh, and repetitions of words and textures. Uh, admittedly, with researching stuff, I have fallen behind uh, in terms of comics, uh, and with our TCAF this year, it's going to be much harder to discover uh, new cartoonists. I've not read for pleasure in many years, uh, like I was saying earlier, but currently, uh, or my last favorite book, uh, or a book that had a huge impact on me, was Voices from Chernobyl uh, by Svetlana Aleksevich. Uh, it more or less describes the same thing on every page, yet it's never not shocking or upsetting. Uh, the book is incredible. Uh, I haven't seen it, but I imagine if you enjoyed the HBO series, you will love this. Uh, very moving, very affecting. Uh, one of the great joys that has come out of this channel is people associating my work with night. Uh, appointment viewing is all but dead in this age of streaming and video on demand, but I grew up with insomnia, and I associate so many shows or aesthetics and feelings with the time between 11pm to dawn. Uh, I create my content with that in mind, and I've been told by a few people uh, that they enjoy watching it at night, uh, be it sleep core or scripted, which is awesome. Uh, I've struggled with sleep for so long, uh, be it insomnia or I've not experienced them in a while, but I used to have horrible night tears weekly. Uh, the most intense ones saw my bed kind of turn sideways and I went flying or threw myself off. Uh, this was many years ago, uh, but sleep can still be a struggle. Um, for as long as I remember, I've had some form of media as a sleep aid, uh, be it television or podcasts, uh, talk radio. Uh, obviously, Sleep Corps grew out of that and lends itself to our late night identity. I'm sure it's what got many people into this channel. Uh, Sleep Corps is not something I created per se. It's uh, at best an aesthetic I contextualized. I make no claim or, over uh, or ownership over it. Um, I encourage you to curate your own Sleep Corps uh, to help get you through the night. Uh, it's hard to describe to somebody uh, what exactly Sleep Corps is, but you know it when you see it uh, or you feel it. Uh, that's how I see it, at least. Uh, that and as a show. Uh, it also grew out of Vaporwave and the idea of nostalgia or memories of things you never experienced uh, and my affinity for late night or slow TV. To be honest, I'm over it, <laughs> to be perfectly honest. Um, I know people still enjoy them, so I keep making them. Um, you know, and I enjoy making them. It can be relaxing. Uh, but I've said all I wanted to with it. Um, not that interesting things can't still be done within the aesthetic. Right now I'm interested in exploring the themes and aesthetics that have come to be associated with it. Uh, it's very difficult finding usable clips around a theme, um, and that can also be very limiting. If you're wondering where it is, or why I barely stream anymore, my computer is getting old and can no longer handle streaming reliably. Uh, I don't want to build up expectation and stream only to have it fuck up. Uh, I also can't do them frequently because there's only so many usable clips. Uh, I try to only use content in the public domain, uh, or at least ambiguous. Um, I find a lot on archive.org, uh, specifically the Pringler Archive. Uh, this is a collection of films that has been curated and collected by Rick uh, Pringler. Uh, absolutely incredible. I'll link it below. Uh, so for now, until I get a better computer, Sleep Core will be going directly to Patreon for free, uh, and I'm hoping to do them monthly. Uh, I sometimes want to make them uh, too personal or reflect whatever mood I'm feeling, um, but that has potential to put people off. I think it's possible to present off-putting or upsetting content, even part of Sleep Core. Uh, see Nightmare Core. It's excellent. Um, but I believe that if you are going to make people feel hopeless uh, or present disturbing images, you have to end it with some hope uh, or make it fun, <laughs> preferably. Uh, don't break people down if you can't put them back together. Uh, what's my personal favorite sleep core? If we are talking streams I've made, it's either the aforementioned Dreams Media Memories, for the reasons stated, uh, or the public access one. Uh, I love how you're lulled into this calm, kind of fun story, and then it gets very upsetting and very weird very quickly. Uh, in terms of my private stash, night moves, or walk, or ride, are huge. Uh, another one of my favorite things ever, this was a TV series that aired here in Canada. Only four episodes. Uh, were produced, I think, between 86 and 93, uh, but they were repeated nightly as an attempt to replace the test pattern. Um, you know, something a little more easier on the nerves, uh, a little more enjoyable. Uh, Night Moves consisted of first-person tours around Toronto, which is my home, walks or drives with a jazzy soundtrack. Uh, I imagine in a pre-internet world coming home from the bar or a party and just calming yourself down with this. Uh, my mom talked about watching it when my brother and I were infants uh, and were sick and still up. Uh, also apparently had a huge following among prison inmates. Uh, I tried to replicate this, or capture it in my old neighborhood with clips of addicts screaming on the street, um, but the original is extremely relaxing and kind of romantic. Uh, Toronto is presented as moody and contemplative, and uh, yeah, my city doesn't look or feel like this anymore. Uh, just to see a condos, and this current crisis is wiping out everything that still made it special, uh, so it's pretty sad. 
Uh, Sleep Core also grew out of regional television. I love the aesthetics of 80s regional TV, Dad I'm alone in that. Uh, so I'll sometimes watch this to wind down. Uh, I've also recently been big on country music from the 40s uh, with Melatonin and Mint Tea. I am very much into the connection between Love and Dreams and a lot of songs from this period uh, through the 50s and 60s uh, and even earlier uh, before mass media when you would conjure this image of someone in your mind and, uh, and that's how they'd exist. Um, you know, being alone in quarantine right now makes me, uh, makes me feel this way. I also love the textures and aesthetics of eight and 16 millimeter home movies. Uh, media holds ghosts and these aesthetics can trigger memories and feelings. Uh, so can dreams. I talked recently in a video about how media affects our dreams. Uh, and I love the idea of me being in your dreams. You fall asleep watching Sleep Core and uh, go wherever it is that you go. And during the bumper, my voice shows up. It's a, it's a weird idea, um, and I love that it's taken off. Uh, people love it, so I'm going to keep making them. Uh, the Simpsons gave me the gift of interest. I wanted to understand the references that were being made, and it opened me up to a whole world of film and literature. Uh, it's my favorite TV show. Uh, my favorite episode is a Millhouse Divided. I have a dignity tattoo, and I identify with Bart in this one, uh, because my good friend's parents were going through a divorce at the time when it first aired. Uh, there is still time, but I, you know, I don't currently resemble Kurt Van Houten, like I once feared I would. Um, that was a, a huge uh, point of um, anxiety for me. Uh, we'll see how everything turns out. I also love Trios of Horror 6. I have so much nostalgia for all the early, uh, meaning first 12 Trios of Horrors. Uh, Bart the Lover as well. Season 3 is probably my favorite season. Uh, I love the world building. Springfield really comes into its own. And it's the last time uh, the show seems to have a foot in the 80s, if that makes sense. Uh, most decades have a few years of overlap. My favorite character, uh, or characters, are Krusty. I could watch a spinoff of the classic Krusty episodes from Bard to Darkness. Um, I also like Troy McClure. Uh, Phil Hartman was brilliant, and I think the idea of this washed-up 70s heartthrob taking whatever media job he can to stay relevant is hilarious. Um, you know, very Alan Partridge-like. That's uh, my other favorite show. I'm Alan Partridge. Uh, or really anything Steve Coogan does with that character. Uh, and yeah, um, I guess I'll wrap this up by answering a few random questions about myself. Um, my favorite aesthetics are mid to late 70s video. This is long before I was born, but I've always found something comforting. Uh, like the relatives' houses I visited as a child. You know, this informed their life. Um, I also love mid-century modern, especially animation. It's, uh, it feels so optimistic and joyful. I am a proponent of physical media. I've had huge collections throughout my life of uh, DVDs uh, or vinyl or games, and circumstances have caused me to sell off a lot of them. Um, but as I'm becoming a little more secure, I've started collecting again, uh, DVDs and Blu-ray mostly, as games have grown obscenely expensive. Um, in terms of movies, my favorite director is Fassbender, Rainier Werner Fassbender. Uh, he made some very progressive movies, even by today's standards, um, even if some aspects haven't aged well. Um, I like Any Year with 13 Moons the best, um, but I would recommend people start with Ali Furiates the Soul uh, or Berlin Alexanderplatz. It predates uh, prestige television, but can absolutely be binged. Um, high quality, episodic. Uh, it was actually originally produced as some 15 hour film. Um, I haven't watched a lot of movies lately, but the last director that I really got into was Janie Geyser. Uh, we made a video about her a year or two ago. A uh, really interesting puppetry in stop motion. Uh, my favorite movie depends on year, really. Uh, the first movie that really became an obsession with me was Back to the Future, uh, when I would have been probably 10. I <laughs> shouldn't surprise anybody. Uh, introduced me to time travel and the concept of nostalgia. Um, I love that the plot just goes there in terms of incest. It's very heavy, um, but I think handled well. Another movie that had a huge influence over me was Chasing Amy. Again, has an age the best, but for the time, it was huge. Uh, I saw it in the early aughts, mid-puberty, and it presented a life and philosophy I didn't know existed. Uh, I identify or identified at one point with Ben Affleck a lot, uh, Holden. Uh, you know, someone who tries to understand and tries to get involved, in this case, specifically queer communities. Um, you couldn't pay me to watch a new Kevin Smith movie, but, uh, but I love this movie. Uh, I also love American movie. Uh, I encourage any person who wants to create anything to watch this. It's so real in the way it captures mediocrity uh, and failure, um, but also artistic passion. Uh, music, my favorite genre is jazz. I like it on the weirder side, so Eric Dolphy, Joe McPhee, uh, Peter Brotsman, uh, also Scott LaFaro from the Bill Evans Trio. That whole group in general is just amazing. Um, I was really into the Grateful Dead for a period. Uh, my favorite year is 72, if you know, you know. Uh, I also love doo-wop. It reminds me of driving around the country with my mom when I was younger. Bob Dylan was huge uh, for me in my late teens. 
Uh, I was an emo kid in high school, uh, loved indie rock. I fell out of music a few years ago after getting into noise, uh, which I find very therapeutic and interesting uh, texturally. Uh, John Weiss is great. Uh, I only got back into listening to music recently uh, when I got Spotify. Uh, lately, I've been listening to a lot of Alice Coltrane and Richie Sakamoto, and like I mentioned earlier, uh, country from the 40s, so Patsy Cline and Gene Autry. Uh, if I could afford to, I would probably be traveling 60% of the time. Uh, I am absolutely a homebody, but I love being in transit, always moving and feeling and remembering. Uh, my favorite city in the world is Amsterdam. Uh, lots of fond memories from Vondel Park and the Film Museum there. Uh, I traveled all through Central Europe and the northern part of Cuba. I love Cuba. Uh, I was there before they lightened the embargo, and it was fascinating. Uh, not a McDonald's in sight. Uh, being so close to the States, I've been down the eastern seaboard of Florida a few times. Uh, also New York and Chicago. Love Chicago. Uh, fascinated by America. I disagree with everything that's happening there now, but I love Americans. Uh, the ones I've met and interacted with are lovely. Uh, loud, but uh, lovely. Uh, I've also been all across Canada, but I don't think I'm going to be doing much traveling in the near future. Uh, and yeah, parting words, thank you. If you made it this far, you must really like me, so that's reassuring. I wish I was better at other social media, so encourage me. Like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter. Uh, I have an Instagram, but I don't really use it. I'm sure you're hearing now how loud this apartment can get and uh, the struggle I go through uh, in the circumstances I record under. Uh, there is a new sleep core available for free over on Patreon. Um, also, a lot of people may not know there is a sequel video for nearly every video I've ever produced on this channel uh, over on Patreon as well. That's what you get for $5 a month. Uh, so if you like what we do, please consider supporting us. Uh, if this is your first time here, welcome. Uh, you picked a weird one, uh, but please subscribe or at least check out more. Uh, once again, everybody, thank you so much for your support and your interest in this channel. Uh, and hey, thanks for stopping by. Stay safe out there.